the next episode is somewhere completely different again. We have Psychologist Man and Mars Murderer Man. Psychologist Man opens with a monster classic. Well, this time it is actually a narrative device. He uses this as a standard introduction to ease the other person to opening up. This still perpetuates Naoki's strange view that randomly dumping your sob story on someone will actually make them like you and not just think that you're a weirdo who probably has ulterior motives. Not much of value comes out of this scene, it's the usual awkward dialogue. It introduces these two characters, I guess, and now Kurosawa tries to shop the show's maturity down your throat, especially with that last line. It's all rather juvenile. Back at the office, Psychoman explains the obvious. One of the murders doesn't fit, and apparently it was done at the request of a friend. Spoiler, that friend is Johan. Then Tenma shows up. They reminisce about old times, so to say. The dialogue is the usual brand of garbage, and the relevant info is Psychoman thinks that Tenma hates him since they are acquaintances from university and something seems to have happened between them. And Tenma's here because he wants Psychoman's psychotakes on Johan's messengers. Tenma explains the Johan situation, then we get a flashback once again. In it, we learn that Psychoman used to be the local Giga Chat, but then Tenma came along and took away all his popularity because he's just so darn sociable. This is going to be contradicted twice by the show, but Psychoman might just be an unreliable narrator, even though I think that's still manning the show a bit. Anyway, Psychoman's tragic backstory is that he learned really hard to become the very coolest again, but he cheated on his final exam, Tenma saw it, and that never left Psychoman. For some reason. Tenma didn't even tell on him. Well, this time, for some reason, is not fully appropriate, there are some good indicators that Psychoman is a bit neurotic, he tapes everything, he was super careful earlier with the door, and the fact that this instance still haunts him plays into that. As Murderman analyzed so accurately, this guy has issues. So I guess we can give that one to Naoki. Psychoman then does the hand-waving I announced two episodes ago. He explains that Johan was merely doing a little trolling. He does add that you shouldn't jump to conclusions, but the show never talks about this ever again, so I guess that's the explanation. Johan left a message in Verden and a message in the Nazi mansion only to troll Tenma, even though the second message was directed at Anna. Was it not supposed to be Vana? Why did she have to take away then? Is Johan just trolling his sister as well? But doesn't he really care about her, why would he do that? The fuck? Well, all of these questions will never be answered, as mentioned, the show never talks about this again. Now, fans of the show have crafted their theories about how Johan's actions are explained and what could have triggered each personality and things like that, and obviously you are free to write the show for Naoki, but I think I'm still gonna call him out on the shit he actually did put in here. Or lack thereof. The next day, for some reason, Psychoman decides to play Tenma's interview to Murder Man, who says he gets it. Psychoman says, yeah bro, I get it too. Murder Man calls him a pretentious faggot and deliberates that the monster is to be taken literally in this case. Since Psycho Man doesn't like when people mock him, which he so kindly tells us again, just in case you forgot the last scene happened, he gets angry, so Murder Man bullies him a bit more, and then tells him to go to the mansion where the Murder Man committed his out-of-character murder because the proof that monsters really exist is there. The security in this high-security complex is pretty shit, by the way. Psycho Man reports Selma to the police, then makes his way to the place the Murder Man pointed to. What he finds there is a ton of pictures and a bad jump scare. <gasps> he decides that this is perfectly normal and turns to leave, but on the stairs a singular brain cell seems to have activated. He listens to a previous interview with Jürgens, that's Murder Man's name as we now know, where he describes that his mom always beat him in a room that looks exactly like this one. Which is complete bullshit since this description is incredibly vague and the room would have probably looked completely different, but that's not even the dumbest part. The dumbest part is that Johan is behind this all. Okay, let me explain the situation. Mrs. Kempf was one of Johan's many foster parents, so Johan wants her dead. So far, so good. In order to kill her, Johan starts sending letters to a serial killer, in which she is very friendly. How did Johan know that Jürgens is a serial killer? Good question. He sends a great many letters, and in the last one he tells Jürgens to go to Mrs. Kemp's basement. Jürgen thinks Johan's pretty cool at this point, so he does. In that basement, he finds a, badly made, recreation of the room that traumatized him in his childhood, freaked out, and killed Mrs. Kempf, who he somehow managed to cope into believing is his mom. Multiple questions about that one. First, how the fuck did Johan know these details about Jürgen's childhood? Keep in mind that this is before Jürgen's got caught, so it isn't from his contacts in the police. Finding the culprit behind serial murders is already a thing, but somehow finding out secrets about that man's childhood trauma? How? Well, I know the answer already, and so do you at this point. Johan really does have the superpower of random knowledge appearing in his head. That is not a joke, by the way. The show will make this canon eventually. 
The other question is, how the fuck did Jürgen Spider's room as the real deal? The photographs are really shittily edited. Just look at this crap. And the doll is 100% not the same as from his childhood too. And if it is, where did Johan get it? Not to mention the arrangement. Wondering, how the fuck did he know that is fair? But Jürgen's actually buying it is even more retarded. He killed someone just because Johan knew about his childhood. Somehow, they lured him into this room and his conclusion was, guess she's my mom, better go kill her. Absolutely ludicrous. To continue our streak of retardation, Psycho Man goes up into Mrs. Kent's bedroom, with the best music in the series, and finds out that Johan also sent letters to her. And for some godforsaken reason, they are just copies of his two Tenma messages. Why? Why did he send these to her? Why so many? What was her reaction to this? Why did she keep them? Why does Psycho Man conclude that Tenma is totally innocent instead of going to the longest route, instead of assuming that Tenma is Johan, with whom it would actually make a tiny bit of sense? Why is the series so bloody retarded? Why do people shill for it? What the hell is going on? Next scene, Psycho Man saves Tenma from the police that he alerted, and Tenma reveals that he was also cheating that day, so they become friends. How holds? Psycho Man gets no repercussions for this, and Tenma looks like a complete loser, so all is perfectly normal for monster standards. Psycho Man and Tenma also bring up theories why Johan does shenanigans and what he does currently, but both of them are wrong, probably because Naruki decided not to use them, and now they are just dead air in the show. Also, five buses left at the same time? 